Good morning everyone. Today we are going to discuss about thoracic sympathetic chain. Learning objectives would be our main aim is to understand the thoracic part of sympathetic chain under course relations, ganglia and its branches. So here a sympathetic chain as such you all know it consists of two ganglionated trunks or chain extending from here that is base of the skull up to coccyx okay so base of the skull up to first coccyx you can see here so this hole on each side we have this one chain but we are reading in parts in so the, in the neck region you have already done with the cervical part of the uh, sympathetic chain now in thorax region we are discussing about thoracic sympathetic chain as such it is located by the side of vertebral bodies so para vertebral in position and terminates by fusion in front of the coccyx to form an unpaired ganglionated impar now this sympathetic chain has number of thickenings here which we call the ganglia so we have you all know we have three ganglia in the cervical part we have 11 actually there are 12 but uh, mostly one few first one fuses with the uh, lower inferior cervical sympathetic ganglia forming the steroid ganglia so usually we have 11 thoracic ganglia four in the lumbar part four in the sacral region so we are going to discuss about the simp thoracic part so we will be discussing about the ganglia of thoracic region only So this thoracic sympathetic chain is a ganglionated chain or trunk located on either side of the vertebral column. As such, it is a continuation. So superiorly, it continues with the cervical sympathetic chain at the thoracic inlet. Inferiorly, it will continue uh, with the lumbar sympathetic chain passing through the diaphragm, passing through uh, or passing behind the medial acute ligament of diaphragm. We'll discuss later on. This uh, where it, uh, what is the course actually here when this we are talking about not we are not talking about the nerves spinal nerves you are talking about this ganglionated chain you can see here this this is your inferior cervical sympathetic ganglia now after that we have thoracic ganglia okay thoracic sympathetic ganglia so the first one lies near the neck of first rib after that from second to tenth rib they lie in front of the heads of the ribs and then in the lower part that is 11th and 12th one it will dry, lie by the side of vertebral bodies uh, of 11th and 12th thoracic vertebrae so it is coming obliquely to more towards the medial side extending from neck of the first rib up to the thoracic 11th and 12th vertebrae so now we are going to discuss about relations so when this trunk this is your yellow sympathetic chain with these thickenings thickenings actually they are flattened widened part they're not the proper thickening which we draw actually that doesn't appear like that so this is your uh, ganglionic chain it is running in front of these intercostal vessels so it is coming in front of posterior intercostal vessels and then uh, anteriorly it is it will be related to because it is in the thoracic part so some part of pleura and lungs and as it comes down it will pass behind the medial arcuate ligament so in the lower part it will be related to medial arcuate ligament of the diaphragm and above and below as i already told you it is continuous with the inferior cervical sympathetic ganglia to form the steroid ganglia and below it will be continuous with the lumbar sympathetic chain so here this is the view of the diaphragm from below okay from below we can see here we have openings here vena cable opening this is your aortic opening now this part the sh the part of the uh, you can say this is actually the fascia here which is thickened in front of this muscle swas major so this is your medial arcuate ligament this is a part of your diaphragm medial arcuate ligament from which these muscular fibers are taking origin so behind this medial arcuate ligament we are able to see here this chain this is your lumbar chain now so sympathetic chain have passed behind this medial arcuate ligament to continue as lumbar sympathetic chain so this is a prosected specimen with the chain here this is your sympathetic chain thoracic sympathetic chain these are the ganglia fine and these are intercostal vessels and nerves okay so it is running in front of intercostal nerves and vessels actually okay 
this is how appears uh, this chain when you have to remove everything from the thorax now ganglia here we have initially 12 ganglia in the thoracic region usually first fuses with the seventh cervical ganglia to form stellate ganglia so ultimately we have 11 ganglia in the thoracic region and each of this ganglia lies intervertebral disc of the corresponding you can see there this is the cervical and thoracic vertebrae this is first thoracic second thoracic this is intervertebral disc so usually they lie by the side of the vertebral column at the level of intervertebral discs and is connected to their spinal nerve by remi communicantis you all know white and gray remi communicantis we'll discuss later on now we can see here this is your cervical sympathetic chain actually superior middle and inferior cervical sympathetic ganglia here you can see inferior cervical ganglia it is fused with the first one first thoracic and they are forming the stellate ganglia okay this is your second thoracic ganglia so first one usually fuses with the inferior cervical sympathetic ganglia remi communicants uh, here what is this remi actually you know uh, for this you have to revise a spinal nerve a typical spinal nerve so this is your uh, cut section of spinal cord where you can see the gray and white matter so in the lateral horn of the gray matter we have the sympathetic uh, ho uh, horn cells you can say we have the lateral horn cells we have the cells of the sympathetic fibers from here the free ganglionic fibers comes and they pass through these roots we have ventral and dorsal root dorsal root is recognized by dorsal nerve root ganglia so these fibers they pass through the ventral root from the ventral root they ultimately pass through this trunk of the spinal nerve and then they pass from one of the remi the communication between this ganglia so you can see the sympathetic ganglia it's connected to the spinal nerve by two connections here they are called as remi communicantis so these fibers they pass from one of the remi and these fibers are pre-ganglionated fibers they are uh, myelinated fibers so that's why the remi here is called as white remi communicantis so these fibers reach here to the corresponding sympathetic ganglia and they form give rise to relay here and give rise to post ganglionic fibers post ganglionic fibers will pass through another connection this is called as gray remi communicantis and the fibers ultimately will pass through the spinal nerve from there through their ventral and dorsal remi these are roots this is trunk and this is remi so finally ventral and dorsal remi through that it will reach to the effector organ or we can say it is reaching to the dermis of the skin so these are remi communicantis the connection of the sympathetic ganglia with the spinal nerves in a better picture you can see the line diagram which you can draw so from here pre ganglionic fibers are coming through one remi this is called as your white remus when post ganglionic fibers are going through one another this is called as gray remus so white remus gray remus now branches as such we have two types of branches medial and lateral group of branches the one which are coming medially and you can say they are going laterally laterally are actually the remi communicantis and medially now medial branches we can divide into groups the branches from first to fifth ganglia they are post ganglionic fibers and they form plexus around uh, for the lungs you can say pulmonary plexus for the heart cardiac plexus around the aorta aortic plexus and around the esophagus esophageal plexus so these fibers takes part in the formation of plexus around these structures in addition with the other nerve fibers like vagus nerve or other fibers they are forming the plexus together so sympathetic component of the plexus because the plexus consists of both the sympathetic and parasympathetic the sympathetic part of the plexus will come from first to fifth ganglia through the medial branches and medial branches from fifth or sixth to twelfth ganglia actually the pre ganglionic fibers here they give rise to splanchnic nerves we'll discuss greater lesser and least splanchnic nerves in detail later on now we can see here these are the sympathetic ganglia here how the fibers they are coming from these ganglia the fibers they are going towards the heart and here they are forming the sympathetic component of cardiac plexus similarly around the esophagus the sympathetic ganglia they are giving its fibers to form the esophageal plexus and another one you can see here anterior and posterior pulmonary you have this anterior and posterior pulmonary plexus so in front and behind these pulmonary vessels okay we have pulmonary plexus 
Now coming to splanchnic nerve. Splanchna means actually the visceras here. So we have three types here. The one, the first one and these splanchnic nerves are preganglionic fibers. In plexus of esophageal plexus, cardiac plexus, pulmonary plexus, we had postganglionic fibers. Here, the preganglionic fibers they start from they are coming from the fifth to ninth ganglia, medial branches from fifth to ninth ganglia, preganglionic fibers. They descend obliquely on the vertebral bodies, pierce the corresponding crura or crust of the diaphragm, and terminates ultimately in the ciliary ganglia mainly, but partly into aortic renal ganglia and suprarenal gland. We can see here that on line diagram, if you draw, you can number here actually from 5th to 9th, they will be forming the greatest splanchnic nerve. 10th uh, and 11th will form lesser and 12th will form the least. Okay, so now these fibers, they join together to form one nerve passing downwards and obliquely and it will pierce one of the right, on right side, right crust, on left side, left crust of the diaphragm and it has to enter into the lumbar region. Ultimately, they will terminate into the celiac ganglia, mostly. Okay, you can see how the greater, lesser and least is formed. I'll show you the cadaveric, in the diagram, cadaveric specimen also, how they appear. Lesser, as I already told you, you can see these are the splanchnic nerves. Okay, the course is same, but formation is from preganglionic fibers of 10th and 11th ganglia. Descends obliquely on the vertebral bodies. You can see they are coming here. This is your greater splanchnic nerve. This is your lesser, and this is least. Pierces the corresponding crust and terminates same as that of the greater splanchnic nerve, usually in the ciliac ganglia, partly in the aortico renal ganglia and suprarenal gland. Least splanchnic nerve, which is very also called as renal nerve. Uh, it is very tiny nerve, very small nerve, may be absent also. Preganglionic fibers here come from 12th ganglia. Course will be same as that of the other splanchnic nerves, but uh, it may pierce the right crust or the corresponding crust, or it may pass behind the medial arcuate ligament along with the other part of the sympathetic trunk and terminates usually in the renal plexus. Okay, now we can see here, this is the posterior thoracic wall. We can see here, this is a sympathetic chain with the ganglia. Here from T5 onwards, we have these fibers, pre fibers, they are forming this chain called as greater, most medially is a greater splanctic nerve. This is your lesser splanctic nerve and this is a least splanctic nerve. These splanctic nerves have to reach towards the celiac ganglia to supply the viscera in the abdomen. This is the prosected specimen I showed you earlier. Now you can see here, this is a uh, sympathetic, uh, the splanctic nerves here. Okay, greater splanctic. Greater you can see easily. If you do the dissection very well, you can see this is your, uh, what is this? Can you, are you able to identify this one and this structure? This is your descending thoracic aorta. This is your azygous vein. And this is the right side of the thoracic wall. So these are posterior intercostal nerves and vessels in the intercostal grooves. This is sympathetic chain with the ganglia and here we have medial branches forming greater splanctic nerve. The another type, another prosected specimen very nicely shown here. This is your greater, most medially, this is your uh, T6, T5, 6, 7, 8, 9, they form the greater splanctic nerve. T10 here and 11, they are forming the lesser splanctic nerve. And this is least, least splanctin of this one, beautifully shown here. Now lateral branches, as I mentioned you earlier also, they supply limbs and body wall. They are pilomotor, vasomotor and pseudomotor to the skin of the particular regions where they supply. Okay, these are actually the remi communicants. We have white remi, we have white remi, already we discussed this thing. Uh, white remi, grey remi and uh, here the preganglionic fibers is coming from the lateral horn cells of the sympathetic system. These when they pass through the ventral root of the spinal nerve then through the white remi communicantus forming uh, relaying here given as to postganglionic fibers which passes through grey remi and then it will pass through the corresponding uh, remi ventral and dorsal ramus of the corresponding spinal nerve through which it will supply the uh, skin of the particular region on the back through the dorsal ramus on the 
front by the ventral ramus. So these, this is all done about the sympathetic uh, thoracic sympathetic chain. How, what are its ganglia? What are its ganglia actually? Where they are located? How they are forming the splanchnic nerves during dissection? You should be able to make out these nerves. You should not cut during the dissection. Okay, this is white ramus. This is gray ramus here. This is a line diagram which you can easily understand. You can draw by yourself. You can use two colors. One for the pre fibers, other one for the post fibers. Now here your task is to revise the spinal nerve again. The course of spinal nerve and cervical sympathetic chain or trunk. Fine. Thank you so much.